This is about defending democracy. This is no longer Democrats versus Republicans. What do you want your kids to believe in? There must be give and take. This is White Flag with Joe Walsh. When I was in Congress, Jim Jordan and I were colleagues and we were very good friends. Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. Uh, we were part of the, uh, the Tea Party Caucus. Uh, we were part of the, the, the beginnings of what became the Freedom Caucus. When I was in Congress, there was a group of about 15 to 20 of us, hardcore, conservative Tea Party, pro-Constitution, pro-limited government, pro-anti-taxation, pro-anti-tax, anti-tax. We were, we were the hardcore, uh, what people called the Tea Party crazies back then. Jim Jordan and I were part of that group of about 15, what then became the Freedom Caucus. Jim Jordan and I were very good friends. We were very close. You should know that when I publicly came out against Donald Trump five and a half years ago, uh, that ended my friendship with Jim Jordan. Uh, I, I, I didn't choose to end the friendship. It just ended. But I bring this up because I got a note from a supporter of mine earlier this week, a former supporter of mine. And like the messages I get from many former supporters of mine, I'll, I'll clean up the language, uh, but it went something like this. Hey, hey, Joe, he said, you and Jim Jordan used to be best friends when you were in Congress. Hey, Joe, what the hell happened to you? And I cleaned that up. The note wasn't that diplomatic. But isn't it interesting that my former supporter said, Joe, you and Jim Jordan used to be very good friends. Joe, what happened to you? Like, I went wrong. Like, I went sideways. Like, Jim Jordan and I are no longer good friends because of something I did. Well, I thought about the, the message I got from a former supporter for about 20 seconds, and I responded quickly. I said, well, that's easy, Steve. That's easy. Uh, Jim Jordan and I are no longer friends because Jim Jordan decided to follow Donald Trump and I decided to follow the rule of law. And that's that. He didn't really respond to that. But my point is fairly obvious. Jordan and I were close colleagues. We believed in a set of principles, a core set of values. We were conservative, as conservative was understood to be then. We believed in freedom and limited government. We believed in balanced budgets. We believed in keeping taxes low. We believed in individual responsibility. We believed in the rule of law. We believed in following the Constitution. We were conservative. And then along came Donald Trump. And Jim Jordan decided to follow Donald Trump and abandon much of what he believed in to follow Donald Trump. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I, I, the, the, the principles, the ideas, the ideals... The core values were more important than following any one individual. And so Jim Jordan and I went our separate ways. And because he's very high profile and I'm very high profile, it's difficult to be close and chummy. It's important to note that the road Jim Jordan chose to follow Donald Trump and abandon the core principles that he said he believed in, 
that's the road more traveled, right? By far, that's the road that most, the vast majority of Republicans have chosen these past seven to eight years. The vast majority of my former congressional colleagues chose that road over there. I'm going to follow Trump. The vast majority of my former uh, media, right-wing media colleagues chose that same road. I'm going to follow Donald Trump. Even if Donald Trump goes against the rule of law, goes against um, telling the truth, goes against what's best for the country, goes against the Constitution, goes against democracy, goes against limited government, doesn't matter. I'm following him. It's the story of this time. I, I do not mean at all to pat myself on the back or pat the handful of other Republicans who chose to follow that road over there. I'm still going to place my principles first. Um... Donald Trump or whoever second, but I'm following my principles. Uh, Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, it's a handful of us. I'm not patting us on the back. I'm not asking you to say, oh, Joe, you're wonderful. You're great. Thank you for doing what you're doing. No. Thank you for doing what you've done. No. It's... It's more about I want you to acknowledge and understand that human nature dictates that when it comes to this world, when it comes to politics, it generally is about self-preservation. And you'll do what you have to do to preserve your position in government, to preserve your office, to preserve people voting for you, to preserve your radio show, your TV show, your ratings and all the rest. For most politicians, that all comes first. That all comes before doing what you know to be the right thing to do. And that's been the story of these seven to eight years for Republicans. The vast, 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 vast majority of Republicans have decided to put Trump before the right thing to do. Donald Trump's been indicted four times. Donald Trump is a serial abuser of the rule of law. If you support the rule of law, no way in hell can you support Donald Trump. Yet Jim Jordan and the vast majority of Republicans do. They chose that road. I didn't. I have no regrets. But yeah, Jim Jordan and I are no longer good friends. Joe Walsh, uh, White Flag with Joe Walsh. Thank you for listening. Hope you've had a good week. Have a great weekend. And as always, be brave out there. Thank you for listening. Remember to listen, share, and follow White Flag with Joe Walsh on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere great podcasts are found. And be sure to leave a five-star review. This has been White Flag with Joe Walsh.